The U.S. decided to destroy, what the other Western powers decided to destroy Yugoslavia in 1989, <clears throat> when it became evident that it was the one country in East, Eastern Europe that would not voluntarily overthrow what remained of its socialist system. It was the one country that was still trying for some kind of economic independence outside of the world global free market third worldization process. They wanted a Yugoslavia whose rich natural resources would be at the disposal of multinational corporations, whose populations would work at subsistence wages, whose economy offered no competition with existing capitalist producers, only new investment opportunities. They wanted a Yugoslavia whose petroleum, engineering, mining, and automotive industries would be undone and deindustrialized. And they wanted to abolish Yugoslavia's public sector services and social programs. Now, why would U.S. policymakers, you really think U.S. policymakers are motivated by some need to abolish the social programs, the public sector services, and Yugoslavia? Why would they want to do that? Do you think they are such uh, nefarious, evil intended individuals? They would want to abolish their social programs. Come on, Parenti. Are you being paranoid? Well, why would they want to abolish our social programs? <laughs> As they have been doing. Aid to families with dependent children, privatizing social security. That's what that president in, the, in Washington is doing. At least a third of it, he's gonna chunk it off and privatize it right under your noses while saying he's saving and serving social security, public health services, public education, environmental regulation, as inadequate at all, as all of these things have been, being cut back, cut back, cut back, library services, oh, we used to have that service, sorry, we don't have enough funds anymore. Not enough funds because we've got to build those missiles, you see. It's the third worldization of Yugoslavia, and it's the third worldization of the USA, and it's the third worldizations of everywhere. That's what the people in column A want. They want a nation that's run by about 50 multi-billionaires, and the rest of us will be 260 million peasants working from hand to mouth for them. Another goal behind the dismemberment of Yugoslavia is to achieve ideological monopoly. Last year, in Serbian Bosnia, the last remaining radio station was a Serbian station. It was a dissident station. It was critical of NATO, critical of Western policy. It was the last station in all of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And the article in the New York Times to see the reporter committing these mental gymnastics to explain why the NATO peacekeepers, i.e. Gestapo troops, went in and closed the station down, why that was a step toward more pluralistic democracy. That this was a, it was a marvelous thing to watch him do these gyrations, you know, down this column. Yugoslavia, before the NATO bombings, before this war began, before that, in Yugoslavia, every opposition newspaper, uh, every opposition political party had its own newspaper, its own radio station, and there were over 20 of them. Milosevic today, <clears throat> Milosevic today uh, uh, has more opposition parties in his parliament than any other leader in Europe. Of course, since the NATO bombings, they've shut down all the newspapers, they've shut down their radio stations, as we had happened in this country with German stations and, and things like that in World War I, if you remember, and we weren't even being bombed or attacked. Milosevic has been elected president three times, twice of the Republic of Serbia, once of the, of the Yugoslav Republic, or what's left of it now, in elections which foreign observers said were pretty much okay and legitimate. Yet he has been called a dictator. He has called, he is called a war criminal. The Hague War Crimes Tribunal has asked the United States for documentation of the war crimes that he has committed so that they, might in, they may indict him as a war criminal. So far, it's been over a year. No documentation has been forthcoming. Will you please tell me, Noam Chomsky called him the monstrous Milosevic, giving no specifics. Could someone start giving me some specifics about it? The, Yugoslav, the U Yugoslavia has another problem on this ideological monopoly. 
Its TV station is state-owned and is run by people who do not see the world the way the U.S. State Department and the U.S. National Security State does.